High among the mountains of Central Asia, the river Lhasa flows through one of the least inhabited regions on Earth, towards the city that shares its name. Lhasa city, dominated by the Potala Palace, is the capital of Tibet, now part of China. The palace belonged to its former rulers, the Dalai Lamas, chief abbots of Tibetan Buddhism. Almost all Tibetans are Buddhists, and for them Lhasa is a holy city, a place of pilgrimage. The prayer wheels they carry hold written prayers, and rotating them, Buddhists believe, gives the prayers effect. Lhasa attracts pilgrims from around the world, but most are Tibetans from outside the city. The residents they pass as they make their way to Lhasa's shrines are nowadays mostly Chinese. Nine hours' drive west from Lhasa, at Shigadze, stands the 500-year-old Tashilumpo Monastery, seat of the Panchen Lama, second in rank only to the Dalai Lama. Tashilumpo is one of only 70 monasteries the Chinese left standing, out of more than 2,000. The Buddha statue, 26 meters high, is believed to be the world's biggest. The 10th Panchen Lama, who died in 1989, is revered by the monks. In 1959, the Chinese made him head of state after the Dalai Lama fled to India when a revolt against Chinese occupation failed. But in 1964, the Chinese imprisoned the Panchen Lama in Beijing for 14 years. A recent report says the Lama was jailed because he complained that mass arrests, executions and the starvation of Tibetan people followed the 1959 uprising. The decor, with its classical Tibetan motifs and traditionally bold colors, and the constant attention of the monks to the candle offerings around the jewel-encrusted tomb, witness to the high regard in which the 10th Panchen Lama is still held at Tashilumpo. In Tibet, as in other Buddhist countries, all monks are revered. But in Tibet, there's an intricate hierarchy. Those in the higher ranks, like the Dalai and Panchen Lamas, are considered reincarnations of Buddhist saints. When the 10th Panchen Lama died, the Chinese replaced him with a six-year-old boy monk. This boy was among those they considered. A Tibetan opera, as with the ancient stage forms of the Western world and much of the traditional theatre in the East, dance is a strong feature. Monks, pledged to celibacy, lead simple, disciplined lives, and the opportunity to join local people and their children watching the opera is a much appreciated chance to relax in a totally different environment. This official of the monastery's democratic committee says there always used to be large numbers of monks, but then, during Mao's cultural revolution, many went home to live secular lives. Now the revolution is over, he says, numbers are almost back to normal. In modern Lhasa's newly laid out Potala Square, a young entertainer shows perhaps that Tibet is changing. The country attracts nearly 30,000 foreign tourists a year. And like anywhere else, locals are more than happy to cater to their every need, whim and fancy. It's not the Champs-Élysées or the Via Veneto, but the object's the same, to separate the tourist from as fat a slice of his or her hard currency as possible. Even for soldiers, beauty in the square has its attractions. And for the young women, there are sarongs and fur hats, bags, belts, and if they want, baubles. But the expensive looking watch on the monk collecting his photographs may be the surest sign of the times. Or else, this. It's in Tibetan and Chinese the Lhasa Stock Exchange. The trading floor area is only 200 square meters. Computer-driven stock quotes, anxiously monitored on the electronic boards, are satellite fed from Chinese exchanges. Defying notions that Tibetans all live in the Middle Ages with no wish to modernize, Lhasa's exchange has more than 2,000 registered members. Daily turnover so far is seldom above the equivalent of 125,000 US dollars, since it opened in 1994, business has gone up 100% each year. Investment last year was more than twice what it was in the previous two years combined. Yeah. 
Summoned back to the monastery, monks with business outside return for refreshment and worship. They'll sit according to their seniority in the community. The Buddhists in Tibet, as in China, Japan and other East Asian countries, the ideal to aim at is perfect enlightenment. And during many reincarnations to help less fortunate creatures gain merit so that they too eventually become enlightened and themselves help others to progress. Tibetan monks are ranked in seven orders, the highest three for those thought to have achieved or to be near enlightened status. Worship is mainly through reciting prayers and sacred texts, meditation and chanting mantras. A favorite incantation invokes the Lotus Jewel, a reference to the 8th century monk considered founder of Tibetan Buddhism. His name, Padma Sambhava, means born of the Lotus. Rosaries, charms, relics, prayer wheels and flags are also used. Outside the monastery, pilgrims burn fragrant juniper as they approach the end of journeys which for many have lasted for months on foot. The clouds of smoke representing the prayers and aspirations which inspired their pilgrimage. Prostrations along the way are typical. The act is considered most meritorious and the hardy perform it frequently during walks of many kilometers per day. And here the humble yet triumphant end. In the courtyard, before the doors of Tibet's oldest and most sacred shrine, the Jokan Temple, pilgrims of all ages and conditions prostrate themselves in worship. Wooden blocks on hands and knees make repeated prostrations easier. Prayer lamps are lighted inside the temple. Other pilgrims will keep them burning, following Buddhist belief that people should help each other to advance through their life and death cycles. Buddhism is about harmony, and the Jokhan temple inspires it, between people with little in common but their humanity. Outside the temple gates, more market stalls, for tourists and pilgrims to buy souvenirs of a holy city surviving in a materialist world, from people who are slowly learning, despite the absence in exile of their preferred leader, the Dalai Lama, to harmonize the ancient with the modern.